Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be creating our own custom fabric using our sublimation printer and a heat press. We're going to be using 100% polyester fabric, but as you can see in the video showing right now, just because it's 100% polyester, not all polyesters are equal. You can see a vast difference from the fabric on the left to the fabric on the right. They are both 100% polyester fabric. They were both pressed at the exact same heat, the exact same time, and printed with the exact same printer, um, just one right after the other. So we're gonna discuss that in the video, how the difference um, in fabric matters, and what might be the best option if you're looking to make a small piece of customized fabric. I sort of discovered this by accident. I was looking to make a small Halloween project and I only needed a little swatch of fabric. I have a lot of Halloween fabric, but I didn't have exactly what I needed. So I thought, well, I'll just go grab um, a design that's similar to what I need and the color that I need, and I'll just print a little piece of a fabric. Well, the one on the left is what I printed first. And at first I thought my printer was running low on ink because I knew this was 100% polyester fabric. Here's another example. These purples should be exactly the same and they're not. The one on the bottom I printed after I discovered the best fabric to use and the one on the top is the first fabric that I was using. Both of them are 100% polyester. So it wasn't an ink issue, it was a difference in the fabric. And here is the final result. This is the one that we will be doing in the video. Again, both of these are 100% polyester fabrics, but look at the difference. One yielded significantly better results as a sublimation transfer fabric. You can see the difference in the vibrancy. You can see the difference in the consistency, the crispness of the pattern. So let's hop over and get this going. The first part of the video, I'm gonna show you how I created the pattern designs and then we'll get into actually pressing them. So I quite often like to use Creative Fabrica to get my designs. If you're not familiar with Creative Fabrica, they have SVGs, PNGs, fonts, you name it, you need it for crafting and it's a digital item, they have it. Specifically for this project, we're looking at digital backgrounds. Now you can buy just a single image or a single cut file from Creative Fabrica or you can be a subscriber, which is what I am. If you are a subscriber, you can download anything you want, as much as you want, all month long that you are a subscriber. So I'll put a link to that in the description below if you're interested. I think it's well worth it. I use it all the time. Again, they have tons. They have 69,000 fonts on here, just for instance. They have 3,201,025 3, graphics. They have embroidery files. They have sewing patterns. There is just a ton of stuff on here. But we are focusing on the sublimation backgrounds. You can use a sublimation background or you could just use a digital background. So you can just come up here in the top and just for instance, let's say you wanted a Halloween background. You were looking for a, to make some Halloween fabric, which is, you'll see that in the video, I did do that. Um, so you can just scroll down here. Here's some backgrounds that you could use. These digital patterns can be used for sublimation. If you just wanted a, a small, you know, piece of fabric, well, you can do it as big as you want, quite frankly, um, as big as your printer will print. So if you wanted something as specific as that, if you're just looking for something in general, which is what we're going to do today, we're just going to hit background. And you can scroll through here. And again, I'm looking to make some fabric. Ooh, that would be a fun one to make. I'm looking to make some custom fabric. So I'm just looking for some fun backgrounds to use for fabric. So this is the one that I picked for the video. I also downloaded another one. Uh, this one is called Abstract, just in case you guys want to print something similar. This has some fun floral designs. I thought those would be really cool. So once you find the design that you want, you just click download and it downloads into your download folder, wherever yours goes. Mine goes right down here in my tray for use. So I'm going to click show in finder. Once I get it, I need to double click it to open those files. And now I have that abstract floral paper and where's my watercolor one? Here's the watercolor one. 
So you want to double click those so that you have the files. All right, so now what we're going to do is go over to Canva. This is canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. This is a free website. They do have a paid version that you can get. Um, the paid version just gives you access to more of their graphics. I just, you, what we're doing today, you can just use the free version. So when you open up canva.com, it's going to look something like this. I click right here where it says custom size. And here you can put in the size of your paper. I like to work in inches. Um, I did them earlier, 11 by 17, and I use the SG-1000. Right now I'm going to use 8.5 by 11. I'm just going to use a letter size, create new design. And here you can see our blank canvas. So now we need to get those backgrounds that we just downloaded into the software. So we're going to go to uploads, upload media. You're going to navigate to where those files are and mine are right here. And here are the watercolor designs. So I'm just going to pick a couple of these that I think will illustrate our purpose. And I'm going to click open. All right, so let's go get the other ones that we uploaded. So we're going to again click upload media. You're going to navigate to where those files are. That was in my downloads folder. Here's the abstract folder and we've unzipped it. Let's just pick a few of these. This one, this one, and this one. And we'll click upload. All right, so you can see the designs come in right over here in your uploaded media. This is my blank eight and a half by 11 canvas. So all I have to do is click on this one and throw it over there. And I am just going to try to fill up my eight and a half by 11 with little samples of these designs that are going to ultimately become my custom fabric. I'm going to grab this one and you can fill it up or make them as big or as little as you want. I'm going to be cutting these up and using them for other things. So I'm going to, let's see, let's rotate that so we can get it on the edge. We'll pull this one up here. So I'm just manipulating them to fill up as much of the white space as possible. I'm just trying to get as much real estate that I can out of my designs. And which other one? Those two are about the same. Let's grab these. And again, you can do these as little as you want or as big as you want. That's the beauty of using digital designs. A lot of times you have a pattern that you like of your fabric, but the design is just too big for what you're making, especially with like applique or small in the hoop embroidery projects. Sometimes you love the fabric, but the design is just way too big. So this makes it really easy to customize your files. And let's grab this one. See if we can squeeze this one in here. All right, once you have everything the way you want it, this is my customized fabric. This is what's going to print out on my fabric. We're just going to click download. It's going to download as a PNG. You can name the design up here if you want to name it so that you can find it later. I'm just gonna call this, uh, we'll call this video fabric test. And now we're gonna download. So you can see it's downloading. It's going to show up right down here in my tray. Now, if you have an Epson printer or you're using something other than a Sawgrass, you can go ahead and use whatever software you want to print your PNG. However you normally print for your Epson software, that's what you're going to do. I'm going to be using the Sawgrass SG500. So we're going to use Sawgrass Creative Studio. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're just going to click start creating. And we're gonna go to canvases. And we're gonna go to, I'm just gonna type in 8.5. And I'm gonna look for the eight and a half by 11 portrait right there. So there's a blank canvas for us. Alternatively, you can go to custom canvas and just type in the size that you want. I would switch this to inches and just type in eight and a half by 11. Either way, you're gonna get the same result. So now we need to get that image that we just downloaded. So we can go to um, galleries. We're gonna go to my images, upload, upload. 
navigate to where we just saved that. That just went to my downloads folder. Here's the one video fabric test. Click open, click save. All right, so right here is my uploaded image. Here you can see the other ones that I'm gonna show you in the video that I printed earlier. But we're gonna use this one. And you can see it filled up my eight and a half 11 paper, just like it should. We're gonna click print. I'm gonna choose the Sawgrass SG500. We're gonna leave it on mirror, although in this case it doesn't really matter. We're gonna change this to polyester and I'm not gonna change anything else. I'm gonna click print. We're going to click OK. We're going to wait for that print manager to open up. Quite often it will go behind the screen. So if you just click on the print manager icon, that'll bring it to the front and it should pop open as soon as it's ready. The reason this takes a little bit of time to go from the printer or from the screen to the printer is because the print manager is in the cloud. So you just got to send that information up to the cloud and then back down to your printer. Again, we're just gonna double check our settings. We're in polyester, text print our paper. Don't need to change anything there. It does look like we're in eight and a half by 11. That's what we want. So we're just gonna click print. So I've got everything printed. We're ready to go, but I wanted to show you up close the difference. I've attached these to a board just so that it's easier to show you. Can you see the difference in this fabric right here is look at the blacks and the pumpkins as opposed to the blacks over here. Again, these are both 100% polyester fabrics. Look at the crispness of the, the paint splotches versus one fabric to the other. And again, these were printed with the exact same printer, the exact same settings on for the exact same time as or on each one. Here is another difference. These, this purple and this purple should be exactly the same. It is merely a difference in the fabric. This top one is the same fabric that you see the more vibrant prints on the, the ones right here. So fabric makes a difference. So what I thought I would do is I went ahead and printed two sets of sublimation prints. This is a sublimation printer. You must use sublimation ink to do this. Um, I printed two of the exact same designs that we just created in Canva. And we're going to press them on both types of fabric. And then I'm gonna show you the difference. So, so the first one we're gonna press, this is a stretch knit 100% polyester fabric. This was the first fabric that I bought when I got my sublimation printer. I thought, oh, a polyester fabric. This is the first thing that came to mind. This is what you generally think of. It's kind of stretchy, um, cleans real well, but that's the first fabric we're gonna do. So the first thing we're gonna do is put our put your paper down. I'm going to lay the fabric on top. I have already lint rolled it, but of course you want to lint roll. This really frays a lot on the edges when you cut it, so you want to make sure that you don't have any lint in there. And then I'm going to take print number one, right here, the one we just printed, and we're just going to lay that on top face down. We're gonna put another piece of butcher paper on the top. Like so. We've got the heat press set at 400 degrees for 60 seconds with a pretty firm pressure. So we're gonna let that press at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. I've got it on a pretty firm pressure. You want to make sure that that fabric is making contact, that it's not going to move. Don't over tighten it. You shouldn't have to, um, you know, put your whole body weight in to shut your press when you're doing sublimation. But we've got a nice firm pressure. You can't reach on the side and pull the fabric out or anything like that. It's tight enough for that. So we're going to see test result number one and how that turns out as opposed to the second fabric we're going to use which I think you're gonna be surprised at the difference, but let's see if it, I get the same results that I was getting initially. So we've got about 15 seconds left. I will link everything I'm using in the description below the video. If you're interested in any of that, check those links out under the video. Um, I am using the SG-1000. You could also use the SG-500. The SG-1000 prints up to 13 by 19. All right, let's check out our results.
So here are our results. This is the, again, 100% polyester fabric. Yes, we have some pretty vibrant colors, but I'm not overly impressed. I mean, they would be great if I didn't know that they could be a lot brighter. So this is 100% polyester canvas called Otter Tux. This gives a much better result. Let's make sure we don't have any ink on our paper. So we're gonna put this down. Again, I'm gonna give it a quick lint roll. We are going to grab our other print right here. Exact same thing. I'm gonna put this face down. I'm gonna grab my butcher paper. That one's got ink on it. Let's use this one. Four hundred degrees, sixty seconds. I'm doing the exact same thing, the exact same pressure, exact same print, exact same equipment. Let's take a look at the difference in the result. I think you're going to be surprised. All right, we're almost ready. Let's see. You can tell already we have a much more vibrant result on the 100% polyester canvas. Here is our 100% polyester stretch knit. Let me turn on the same direction so you can tell side by side. Can you see the difference in the vibrance? Exact same time and temp, the exact same print, and just two different 100% polyester fabric. So what we've learned from this is the 100% polyester canvas produces a much more vibrant result than the 100% stretchy polyester. The fabric that I'm using is called Otter Tex, and I will put it in the link below the video, but I'm gonna put these on the board so that you can, again, see them nice and flat side by side. Get them the same way. Can you see the difference? Isn't that crazy? So today's results really show that not all polyester is the same. 100% polyester doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the best results. And the same applies whether you're doing a t-shirt, a hat, some other type of garment or bag, anything like that. Just because it's 100% polyester doesn't mean it's going to yield the best result. You wanna keep that in mind when you're buying blanks that are not made for sublimation. Just because it's 100% polyester t-shirt doesn't mean it's going to give you a great result. It might, but you might have to do a little bit of testing and you might get a result that's less than stellar. That may not mean that your printer doesn't print vibrant inks. It may not mean that um, you didn't press it long enough. It may mean that your blank has some kind of treatment on it or sizing or something. The fibers were treated a little bit different or maybe they're woven a little bit different that just aren't sublimation friendly. So keep that in mind. But I think we learned that the 100% polyester Otter Tex canvas really can produce some really incredible, vibrant, customized prints. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. I hope this information helps you in your sublimation journey. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out all the other sublimation videos on this channel. I have a whole playlist. I'll try to remember to link that in the description below the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. Thanks so much for watching and never stop making. See ya. Bye-bye.